Um, okay, so our next uh, talk is uh, high precision bootstrapping for approximate homomorphic encryption by error variance minimization. And uh, Yongwu Lee is giving the talk. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Yongwu Lee, and I am from Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology. Um, it is our great pleasure to share our work in Eurocrypt, and thank you for attending. Okay, so we have achieved high precision bootstrapping, which is interesting in approximate homomorphic encryption, which is very similar to previous work, uh, prior, previous talk. And then we used error variance minimization technique for that. <clears throat> so um, in this paper, we proposed how to um, find the optimal polynomials for approximate homomorphic encryption, CKK scheme, in the aspect of SNR. And um, it's, this paper is basically how to um, find a good approximate polynomial for CKK scheme. And using this approximate polynomial, we have um, achieved high precision CKK scheme, for example, like more than 90 bits. While um, the interesting thing is that um, it has equivalent multiplicative depth depths to prior R's for 40 bit. And plus, we also proposed a um, algorithm for efficient homopic evaluation of polynomials, um, which is called lazy BSGS algorithm, baby step, giant step. And this is about two times faster than original baby step, giant step algorithm. And um, we also propose the polynomial approximation for baby step, giant step, baby step, giant step algorithm specific polynomial approximation. So this paper, uh, this, this table um, compares the prior arts and our work. Um, um, the prior arts usually use the indirect approximation, for example, using sine function and double angle formula or arc sine, something like that. However, in, our method is in averse to approximate di directly. So prior arts is working as um, composition of small polynomials, but ours requires one single high degree polynomial. The precision is like more than 90 bits, but prior arts achieves up to 40 bit. Um, in this table, we don't consider the pre previous talk because it's uh, something like parallel work, you know. <laughs> so um, the depth is very similar, and um, the measure of noise is different. Uh, the previous work uh, uses minimax usually. Um, the measure of noise means that um, when we say this approximation is good, in terms of what? So the prior arts usually uses minimax as a measure, which means that uh, it minimizes the maximum error. And ours, um, seems the measure of noise as SNR, signal to noise ratio, which is very widely used term. So here's the outline. Um, I'll first um, leave you some preliminaries and then I will tell you about the, our approximation method and then the efficient evaluation algorithm and finally the implementation result and I will conclude the talk. First, preliminaries. High precision home encryption itself is a very interesting topic. Um, did you notice that the best known precision so far is even less than the standard double precision? Um, this is due to the bootstrapping as bottleneck of CKKS accuracy. And that's why we need to, um, it is interesting to study high precision bootstrapping for CKKS scheme. And we can also think about Lee Michanshi attack. Um, um, recently, Lee and Michel Xiao proposed a um, passive key recovery attack for CKK scheme, and uh, its known countermeasure is noise flooding technique, which adds um, uh, to use noise flooding technique, we have to add a huge error after decryption, for example, like 30 or 40 bits. And by doing that, we um, remove most of accuracy. So um, I'm not sure if the bootstrapping error helped this attack or not, maybe, maybe not, but if we have high precision CKKS, everything became very simple. We can naively apply the noise floating technique. Um, I will uh, review the approximate home encryption scheme. Uh, CKKS scheme, Chang Kim proposed by Chang Kim Kim Song, is an approximate home encryption scheme, which is um, efficient for layer or complex numbers. So its interesting characteristic is that the message contains error. So when we decrypt the ciphertext, we got M plus E, oh, M plus E, and we do not extract error here, unlike PGB or FB scheme. Addition and multiplication is 
um, directly supported for CKK scheme, so we can perform any polynomials. However, non arithmetic operations like comparison or modular reduction or maybe let loop um, is not represented by addition and multiplication. So we have to do polynomial approximation for that. And when you do the ciphertext, ciphertext multiplication in CKK scheme, um, we have to perform an operation called re-linearization, and it's expensive. The re-linearization is key switching from um, 1s s squared 3 tuple key to 1s, a linear key. The reason why um, 3 to 4 ciphertext is generated after multiplication is that the multiplication of RLW like ciphertext is done um, it's done by some sort of tensor product. And um, the key switching uh, requires um, a lot of entity, which is heavy. And we also uh, have to consider rescaling in CKK scheme. Um, in CKK scheme, plain text is scaled by scaling factor. And when you multiply, it's squared. So in order to reduce this increment from exponent to linear, to make it linear, we have to perform rescaling. And when we do the rescaling, the message scale and ciphertext modulus is reduced together. And we have to note that the rescaling introduces rounding error. Depths, we define depths as maximum length of a path from input to the output gate for a given circuit. And then we only care about multiplicative depths because addition is cheaper than multiplication, way cheaper than multiplication. And for example, degree D polynomial has depths about log D. And the level of a ciphertext is maximum depth that a ciphertext can perform. And bootstrapping is homomorphic evaluation of decryption circuit. So our goal in CKKS bootstrapping is to refresh the level of ciphertext. But the decryption circuit itself also have depths. So less depths for bootstrapping means that more levels after bootstrapping. It means that less bootstrapping in the whole procedure. So I'll briefly um, review the CKKS bootstrapping. And um, first, uh, after many, many rescalings, we got very small ciphertext modulus here, and we want to increase this to large Q. Um, so if we ignore this mode Q thing here, then we got the multiple of Q term, and we want to remove this. So in order to perform coefficient-wise operation to re reduce this QI term, uh, we perform linear transformation uh, home pin coding, which is called co coefficient slot. And then we perform modular reduction, but we cannot do the modular reduction directly. So we perform polynomial approximation of it. Of it. So we call it F mode, and we finally remove this Q item here. And then we do slot to coefficient, which is inverse operation of coefficient slot, but this is very important. Um, the, I note that the uh, slot to coefficient is given by this, mi multiplied by zeta i, where mi is coefficients of message m, and zeta i is root of unity, so it has size of 1. Okay, uh, what is signal-to-noise ratio, SNR? Uh, SNR is very widely used measure of signal quality, for example, wireless communication or storage devices. So basically, most of noisy, measure, noisy media, we use the SNR to measure the signal quality. It is defined as um, the ratio of signal power and noise power. In CKKS, uh, we can also think that CKKS is a noisy media for computation, right? So to increase a, a big SNR is good, large, large SNR is good. So to increase the power of message, we can use larger scaling factor, very easy. But it's not good because it means larger scaling factor means that more consumption of mod modular, uh, ciphertext modulus when the rescaling, so it means that less levels. So we do like to focus on minimizing the noise power, and which is same as error variance when we assume that error has average zero, which is very reasonable, right? So how do we do the approximation? Okay, what, what should we have to consider in when we design approximation polynomial for CKKS scheme? First, polynomial basis is noisy. The messages in CKKS scheme has error. So the polynomial basis is noisy and the basis error is similar to rounding error introduced by rescaling. 
And as the basis has error, if we multiply large coefficient, the error is amplified. So we don't want to use large coefficients. And the depth is very valuable because if bootstrapping has huge depths or a circuit has huge depths, it's not good because we need a lot of bootstrapping for the whole circuit. So this is basically a penalty for composition of small degree polynomials. The previous works used um, small degree polynomials for approximation, but it is a kind of penalty for this. And um, especially in bootstrapping, final error is not approximation error. We have to do slow to coefficient. And the slow to coefficient is linear combination of independent errors. And we need, to, we need a measure of error considering slow to coefficients, not only just while doing the approximation. It is very important. So how does the noisy basis affect the polynomial? Let's see. Um, say fx is an approximation of f mode. It doesn't have to be modular reduction function. It can be any arbitrary function we want to approximate. Uh, and see, it is uh, denoted by summation of ci times phi i, where phi i is arbitrary polynomial basis. And um, in CKK scheme, if you perform fx, it's not, it does not actually give fx because we have e basis, which is error included in, in this um, polynomial basis. So this term is also added. So the error is multiplied by coefficient ci. So the actual error is the approximation error plus the amplified basis error. Usually E basis is very small, so it's acceptable. But when C became huge, the error became dominant somehow. So the magnitude of error and its coefficient should be small. Um, how do we explain this? Actually, um, when we say WI is variance of E basis I in the previous slide, it is multiplied by C. So its variance is multiplied by C squared. And let's say the approximation error and this um, basis error is independent. Yes, it's independent. So the total variance is given by this. And what you have to find is a coefficient. I mean, coefficient represents the polynomial, the polynomial that minimizes this variance, where E approx is F mod minus F. And the WI is determined by basis error, and the basis error is determined by rounding error. And when we think about the variance, there is also interesting fact we can use, um, which is that the di distribution of input is not uniform. We don't know about the distribution of message because message distribution may be related to the security concerns, but um, the QI has um, specific distribution. So it is better to reduce the error well in, in the portion that the probability is very high, right? This is variance. So um, this graph is the black line is uh, modular reduction function. And we observe that um, the i follows some um, distribution like Allen hole distribution because um, by LW assumption, it is represented by some of um, random uniform numbers. So uh, around zero, it is highly probable. And when it goes, uh, when it goes far from zero, it has low probability. And um, let's see why it's good when you consider the slow to coefficient. Say so, um, the slow to coefficient is given by message times um, zeta, I told you. But uh, when you considering the error, error is also multiplied by zeta and added. So when you say E mode is error in um, slots after mode reduction, and when we do the slow to coefficient, the error E boot became a summation of errors. So uh, when you see the variance of error after bootstrapping, after slow to coefficient, the variance itself is the summation of errors after modular reduction. So it directly gives the variance. So if we reduce each variances, it gives the minimum variance after bootstrapping. However, if we use minimax, as a measure of error. Um, even though we reduce these errors after model reduction, it only gives its upper bound. 
It does not guarantee the minimax error after bootstrapping. And about the depths, let's say p degree is polynomial among elements like set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to deg. And our approximation can do the direct approximation, so our search space is PDEG itself. However, if we use some um, composition of polynomials, the search space is way narrow than previous one, uh, way narrow than ours, I'm sorry. So the direct approximation has less depth than the indirect approximation. Um, for example, we can find some easy um, inequality here. And plus, why our method is beautiful is that it's easy. I mean, it's beautiful. It has a simple analytic solution. So to find this um, C minimizes this value, you can see that those two are quadratic. So the solution is easily given by as derivative. We can find zero of this derivation. So uh, the, uh, the zero is given by uh, the solution of this system of linear equations. And the system of linear equation is easily found. So this is about our approximation. And I'll briefly tell you about our new giant step baby step algorithms. So naively evaluate to, to naively, our naive evaluation of degree D polynomial requires D multiplication because we have to find X, X square, X cube, X D, and some all of it, right? So um, baby step giant step proposed by Han and Gi uh, requires square root of D multiplications. In the baby step giant step, um, the polynomial is recursively divided into smaller polynomial and we build up again. For example, if we given Px, we divide Px by Tk and we get its quotient P0 and its remainder P1. If we got P0 and P1, we multiply Tk to P0 and then add up and we finally get Px. And those values are obtained recursively, right? The building blocks, when you consider the building blocks of BSGS algorithm, um, ciphertext ciphertext multiplication and plain text ciphertext multiplication and um, additions are required. We observe that plain text multiplication and addition does not require linearization. So we can multiply plain text or we can add ciphertext without linearization. So this is a very simplified version how lazy BSGS algorithm is working. So white box is for um, linearized ciphertext and blue box is for not linearized ciphertext. So we got a degree one polynomial um, basis T1. To find T2, we have to square it, right? And to find T3, we have to multiply T1 and T2, but to multiply, we have to linearize T2. To find T4, we have to square T2. To find T5, we have to multiply T3 and T2. So we have to linearize T3 and goes on and on. After then, we got four linearized ciphertext and three non-linearized ciphertext. We have to multiply coefficients here. And during this multiplication of both, we don't have to worry about the scale and factor because we can adjust the scale and factor here. So we can simply multiply those coefficients because it's plain text. And then we can add them. Finally, we got the not linearized Px. If we need, we can linearize it. So in this simple procedure, we reduce two or three linearization, right? This is comparison of baby step giant step algorithms. And the green one is the original BSGS algorithm proposed by Han and Gi. And yellow one is um, lazy BSGS algorithm. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, X axis is degree of polynomial and y axis is number of linearization this is the dominant the most dominant computation and the blue line is for old polynomials because our approximation i didn't explain it but our approximation uh, our approximate polynomial is old um, we can use the oldness to reduce the computation so the implementation result and conclusion uh, this is simplified version of our implement Result. And um, to see the first row, uh, to achieve 31 bit accuracy, we used depth 10. But in previous work, to achieve similar accuracy, we need depth 12 or 11. If you use depth 10, we achieve only 22 bit accuracy. And plus, if we want to achieve high precision like 90 or 100, 
we only need 11 of them. So our method is good in terms of depth. Conclusion, um, we have proposed a optimal approximate polynomial um, and it can be applied to modular reduction and we achieved high precision bootstrapping. And we also proposed a efficient algorithm for uh, to homomorphically evaluate a high degree polynomial. If, if it is not high degree, we can also apply this. You see that uh, like seven degree polynomial it also have gain. Anyway, um, by using our method, we can more, uh, reserve more levels after bootstrapping, and we can use that level for efficient circuit design or to, boost, to speed up the bootstrapping, whatever. And also, as we have high precision bootstrapping, it makes everything simple. We can directly apply a noise pulling technique for INDCPA, INDCPA security. Thank you for listening, and um, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. We have questions for Yong Wu. Hello, thank you for your talk. I simply want to ask how would you compare your lazy BSGS algorithm with Patterson Stockmere algorithm? Oh, oh, that's actually a good question. Um, I, I didn't compare them um, directly, <laughs> but in, in paper we have the um, equation for how to find the number of multiplication. Mm -hmm. So you can simply check it. And as far as I know, in the Petters, the in Peterson Stockmayer algorithm, we can also easily see how many multiplications do we need. Yeah, they approximately need a square root of two n multiplications. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And the difference between PSGS and Stockmayer is that in PSGS is um, good in terms of depth. For the same depth, uh, PSGS can slightly as uh, slightly larger degree polynomial for the same depth. Yes. Uh, do you have another question? Well, hello, thank you for your talk. Um, I maybe misunderstood something when you talked about uh, depth 10. Did you mean that before doing the bootstrapping, you need to have a depth 10 left in your scheme, or do you need, or do you say that after the bootstrapping, you have uh, the possibility of doing a circuit of depth 10? Uh, okay, um, uh, it's the depth for polynomial approximation only. So it, it's basically a depth required for bootstrapping. I mean, uh, for a slot coefficient and coefficient slot, we can use more depths, but it's not a, the focus of this paper. So Okay, so it's before doing the bootstrapping, you need the depth 10 left, well, to be able to do multiple, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's but that's um, before doing the bootstrapping, actually in CKKS, we don't need levels because we just increase Q and this means level. So we have to like increase Q a lot then. Okay. You know. yeah. Any other questions? All right, uh, if not, let's thank Yong Wu and Nathan. That's the end of the session. <laughs>